All right. No, my signal sometimes is that. All right. No, I'm always recording. Don't worry, madam. I will always record. Now, FAC three seven zero two. I'm also referring to FAC three seven six six one. So in this module now, the topics that are key, it is three topics that you will always find in the examination. You are going to find property, plant, and equipment. You are going to find intangible assets, intangible assets. You are also going to find the foreign exchange differences. Are we together? So basically, these are the three main topics that we are going to be covering. So you notice that we are going to finish our syllabus very, very fast. It is the easiest of all the accountings that you can ever see in, in life. But anyway, uh, let's start with the first topic, property, plant, and equipment. Now with PPE, you are looking at international accounting standard number, number 16. So IS 16 will be looking at the measurement and recognition of, uh, uh, of property, plant, and equipment, where it will define what a, an asset is, are we together? So those are things that you will be looking at when you're looking at property, plant, and equipment. But we don't have to go much into detail about IS 16 because you have been doing it since you were, you were first year. So the important thing with property plan and equipment in FAC 3702 is the presentation and the disclosure. Presentation and the disclosure of your financial statement. So when you are presenting and disclosing your property plan and equipment, good people, you are going to first state the name of the entity that you are, you are preparing the financial statement for. Then you write the notes to the annual financial statements for the year ended, whatever year is there. Then you can write number one or two or three then you write property, plant, and equipment. Now, if they say prepare the notes to the annual financial statements, that is UNISA for you. And you don't disclose, even if your calculations are correct, you get zero because you did not answer the question. Do you understand? So in this module, I will teach you how to do it first when you are given a question, and the easiest way that you can do when you are preparing your, your, your notes to the annual financial statements. So you need to prepare the template first before you do your, your calculations. And how is the template for the uh, property plant and equipment uh, like? So, PPE, not first you have your carrying amount at beginning of year. When now you write it in full and you write beginning of year in full, I mean, I'm the only one who is allowed. I'm not writing any exam. Then you have your cost and your accumulated appreciation. Then from your second year, you learned how to do your additions. Your additions can be there due to construction. It can be there due to the acquisition of property, plan, and equipment. So you need to state what type of addition was it. There can be also depreciation. There can also be revaluation, especially for land. The other assets are no longer revalued. Are we together? We can have your, your disposal at carrying amount. Are we together? Then you have your carrying amount
at end of year. Constituting of the cost and accumulated depreciation. So we are going to add some flesh to what we have here so far as we are moving on with the, with the syllabus. Is that clear? So then at the bottom of your note, you are going to state when, who, and the cost minus accumulated depreciation. So in this case, what we are simply saying, we are going to state that the asset was revalued on this date by an independent Swan appraiser. If the asset was shown it cost minus accumulated depreciation, the asset would have had an amount of this. So because we are no longer looking at uh, other assets, so we just say when, who, and cost coupon because we are only revaluing land, the other assets are no longer revalued. Uh, is that clear? Good people? Silence means confusion, or oh, I'm talking something that you've never heard of. Yes, sir. All right. So that's the template of preparing your, your property plan and equipment. Are we together? We are going Chief. to get some play as we go on. Now, let's look at an example Chief. to just read. Yes, sir. Hello? Yeah, no. On, I just wanted to see, I see some of them, uh, some of the figures there, or like accumulated depreciation there, are uh, brackets there. Those are uh, deductions, minuses. Yes, those, so those like, are deductions. Those are, those are minuses. Those are minuses. Yeah, I just, right. which ones? I can't see correctly which ones are, are you. Oh, no, it's fine. Don't worry about today. We are just going to do it practically. Now, we are going to look at an example. Right. Let's say on 1 January 2015, a limited acquired a machine for how much can I say? Hundred thousand. Yes, it acquired a machine for hundred thousand. The asset was ready and available for use on one January twenty fifteen. Useful life of the machine is 10 years. The situation value is equal to 10,000. Disclose the PPE not the year 2010, 2011, and 20, or oh, we're in 15, sorry. For the year 2015, 16, and 2020. Let's write that one down. Fifteen, sixteen, and twenty twenty. If we return it down. Okay. 
now. So when you're pre preparing the notes to the financial statements, I said you first start with the name of the entity. So you're going to say, hey, can somebody put the microphone on if you don't have background noise so that I, I know whom I'm talking to? A limited notes to the annual financial statements for the year ended 31 December 2015. Remember we said 15, 16, 2020. So first, it is your template. But come to you, template. Discard about carrying amount at one panel, or if you want, you can write the beginning of the year. Let me just write at beginning of year, constituting the cost and accumulated depreciation. During the year, we'll be having additions. We have depreciation. Then you have your carrying amount. At end of year, constituting of the cost and accumulated depreciation. All right. So, how are we going to disclose this information in our annual financial statements? So the first thing they said, on the 1st of January, 2015, A Limited, we have disclosed that the name of the company is a limited then, right? They acquired a machine for 100,000. The machine was ready and available for use on the 1st of January, 2015. It's very much important information, okay? Useful life of the machine is 10 years. The residual value is 10,000 disclose the PPE not. So the first question is, the entity has a machine. Where are we going to put that machine in our notes there? When are we going to put the machine in our notes? 
I need to, some of you were there in the first class. Where are we going to put it? Good people. Silence means we don't know for. It's not under people. cost, sir. It's put under cost. cost. All right. All right. Let's do it together like this way. This cost here. Now, let's do this. The amount that you are going to put at the beginning of the year is the amount that was there at the end of the year in the previous year. Do we understand? So the amount that we put at the beginning of the year is the opening balance that is coming from the closing balance of the previous financial year. So at the beginning of the year 2015, there was no asset. Why? Because there was no asset that was transferred from 2014 to 2015. The asset was bought on the 1st of January, which is the beginning of the year, but it was not brought from the previous year. So what we do is all additions are additions that were added during the current year. So we have an addition of 100,000 which was the cost of the asset that was bought in the current year. So what we put there are the movements during the year. So whatever we put at the beginning of the year is what was there in the previous financial year and it is being carried forward to the current year. Do we understand? Yes, sir. All right, so our addition is going to be 100,000, which is the cost of the asset. So the cost of the asset, good people, we have to look at the, 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 the cost of the asset. How do we calculate the cost of the asset? So the cost of the asset mostly, we know that it is its purchase price. Are we together? Now the purchase price will include import duties and non-refatable uh, purchase taxes, like any tax that you are going to pay SARS and you are not going to, to be refunded by SARS. But if you are going to pay, pay VAT out together, you know that that VAT is going to be what? To be, to be recovered from SARS, so that you don't include. But all taxes that the entity is going to pay to SARS are we together? And those amounts are not refundable. That will constitute the cost of the asset. Are we together? Also, we can include any cost that is going to be incurred. Are we together to bring the asset to its present location? And also, usage. So all costs that the entity is going to incur to transport the asset from, let's say you bought the asset in America, you transport the cost of the asset to, to Deben, you transport the asset from Deben to Pretoria, are we together? All those costs are going to be included on the cost of the asset. And also, if somebody is going to come and install the asset, are we together? So sometimes you know that the assets are going to be what? To be installed. So any cost that is going to be incurred by the entity in installing the asset, they are also going to be what? The, to be included on the, on the cost. Are we together? And also we can look at the dismantling cost. Are we together? All costs that are going to, to be incurred when we are going to dismantle the asset in future, but the, the dismantling cost is just the, the present value of the estimated dismantling cost in the art in future. But this one is not in your syllabus. We are going to do that when we are doing our CTA 
So don't worry about the about the dismantling uh, about the spending cost at the present moment. Right. Another cost that can be included is the testing cost. Let's say that you bought an asset, the purchase price is 50,000. You, you transport the asset for 30,000. Uh, then you can have, let's say the installation of the asset. Let's say it is 10,000. Let me just say it's 5,000. Now, as you are installing the asset, maybe you are going to, to test the asset. So the testing cost, let's say in the testing there, you produce a items. Let's say the items were produced for 8,000. The cost of producing those assets is 8,000. Then the selling cost, the, the selling price of those assets is, uh, let's say it is, the cost of testing is eight, then you sold those assets for, for 3,000. So the cost of the asset is going to be 50, plus 30, plus five, plus eight, minus three. So the cost of the asset is going to be 9,000. So one would ask, why did I subtract the 3,000? The 3,000, I subtracted it because as we were testing the asset, we produced products and those products were what? We sold, do you understand? So we are simply saying that the net amount is the one that is going to be included on the cost of the asset. So we incurred 8,000 to produce those products. Then we sold those products at what? At 3,000 rand. So 3,000 to the organization, it was income. Are we together? The cost of producing those goods maybe were 8,000. So you are going to what? To subtract the selling price. Do we understand? So those are the elements of, of cost on the, on the assets. Are we together? Now, uh, there are other costs that you can, you can uh, include, like the professional fees, uh, the, the cost of testing, we have spoken about it. That's what we are looking at. The installation and assembly, are costs that are also going to be included. The initial delivery and the handling cost are also going to be included. The cost of preparing the what the site that the asset is going to be installed, they are also going to be included. Are we together? Or any costs that we are going to be paying our employees that are going to be involved in the construction or acquisition of that property plant and equipment, they are also going to be included on the cost of the, of the asset. Are we together? But there are other costs that the entity might incur that are not going to be included on the cost of the asset. For example, if you have your MPB, uh, where you are celebrating buying an asset, are we together? Those costs are not going to be what? To be included in the cost of the, of the asset. Do we understand? Which cost is it? Cost of what? Oh, you don't know. Hey, what I is it in English? 
<laughs> maybe it's a celebration of buying that asset. I don't know. Yes, I the cost of it. buying an asset, Mr. Damien, the, it, yes, the cost of buying, uh, uh, the, the celebrating, the celebrations that we do uh, as Black people in many cases, when you buy a car, you go home, they go and brew beer and everything. All those costs are not going to be included. All the cost of the what? Of the assets. Or let's say you, you call the president to come and do the official opening of the new plant, I would get that is going to be treated as an expense in the profit and loss, but not on the cost of the asset. Is okay. that clear? It's clear. Okay. Yeah. So, so we understand the elements or the, the items that are not going to be included on the cost of the asset and the items that are going to be included on the cost. So it is important to just know that you are looking at the purchase price and the cost of bringing the asset to its present location and in the research are we together. So that's why we have put an addition of 100,000 on our asset. Right. The next thing that we want to look at is the issue of calculating depreciation. Depreciation, right. Now, depreciation, the important thing is when do we start charging depreciation? We start charging depreciation, depreciation number one, when the asset is ready and available for use. Do we understand? That's when we are going to start charging depreciation. We start charging depreciation when the asset is ready and available for, for use. Now, when the asset is ready and available for use, that's when we are going to start charging depreciation. They can try to trick you. They say they bought the asset on a 1 December 2010. Are we together? Then the asset was ready for use on 1 January 2010. When are you going to start charging uh, depreciation there? There are two dates. Okay. The asset was bought on okay. December, then the asset was ready for use on the 1st of January. So you are going to start charging your depreciation on the 1st of what? Of January 2011. So in on the 1st of December 2010, please, you just put it as an addition, but there won't be any depreciation. Why? Because the asset is not yet ready and available for, for use. Are we together? So we are going to charge our depreciation when the asset is ready and available for you. Like in this example, we are going to charge our depreciation on the 1st of January, 2015. Are we together? Now, depreciation has got many methods. There are so many methods of calculating depreciation. In our syllabus, we are going to be depreciating our asset based on a, a, the useful life of the asset. We can also look at the number of, uh, what can I say? The number of, of units that will be produced by the, by the asset are we together. Those are the ways that we can calculate our depreciation. So we can use the methods of calculating depreciation. We have number one, the straight line method. So under the straight line method, depreciation is charged on the what? On the cost. The cost. Number two, we have the diminishing or reducing balance. 
method, depreciation is charged on the carrying amount. Are we together? Then we can have the units of, of production. Now, when you're looking at the units of production, they will be charging for depreciation based on the unit that has been produced by the entity. Like, for example, we say the cost of the asset is 100,000, and the asset is expected to produce a 50,000 unit. But in the current year, the entity only produced 10,000 units. So when we're checking our depreciation, it is going to be 100,000 divided by, or we can just say multiplied by a 10,000 units that we produce, divided by the total units that the entity is supposed to, or the asset is supposed to produce over its useful life. So it will be 100,000 multiplied by a one over five, 10,000 divided by five, Inga. Uh, so it is going to be depreciation is going to be to be twenty thousand. So that's the 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 depreciation using the units of production. Is that clear? Yes. Are we together? Now, the diminishing balance method in many cases, they don't usually bring, but if it is brought, you just know that you have to calculate the carrying amount. Yeah. Are we together? The straight line method is the one that they, they prefer. So the straight line method, we charge our depreciation uh, based on the useful life of the what? Of the asset. So straight line, remember, depreciation is only charged on the on the cost. Now, how is depreciation calculated? But one thing, using the straight line method. So depreciation is charged on the depreciable amount. Are we together? Depreciation is charged on the depreciable amount. And how do we charge our depreciable amount? Our depreciable amount is equal to the cost minus the residual value. Do we understand? Our depreciable amount is the cost minus the, the residual value. So basically, our depreciation for this asset is going to be how much is the depreciation of this asset that we have? The cost of the asset is 100,000. We subtract our residual value. They said our residual value is 10,000. So we say 100,000 minus 10,000 divided by 10 years are we together? So our depreciation in the year 2015 is going to be 1,000 minus 10,000 divided by 10. You get depreciation of 9,000. Are we together? All right. So we have a depreciation of 9,000. So when we disclose, we will come and we put 9,000 there as our depreciation. At the end of the year, the cost of the asset is still 100,000. Accumulated depreciation at the end of the year is going to be the opening plus the current year depreciation minus the depreciation of the any asset that would have been sold. So in this case, the depreciation of the asset is 9,000. I would get that, which is zero plus 9,000. So in this case, you are going to get, is it 91,000? Is that clear? 
is put your mic on if you don't have noise. Chief. So, all right. Chief. So you are going to have your 91,000. When we come to the year 2016, 2016 is going to take its balances from the previous year, which is year 2015, I would get. So the opening balance for every year is the closing balance of the previous year. That is the reason why we did not put our addition of 100,000 because the 100,000 is an asset that was bought in the current year. So we are going to show it as a movement in the current year as an addition. Are we together? So I am going to say the carrying amount at the beginning of the year is 91,000 constituting of the cost of 100,000 a minus accumulated depreciation of 9,000. So in this case, you have got your 91,000 as the opening balance. Is that clear? All right. Silence means confusion. I can repeat it. All right. Right. Chief. In the year, yes, sir. Um, maybe I just want to understand um, the accumulated depreciation for 2015. Um, yes. Just slowly, yes. how, how did you calculate it? The accumulated say, depreciation at the end. Remember, there are two types of accumulated depreciation. There yeah, is the one this the accumulated end. depreciation at the beginning. There is this accumulated depreciation at the end. So the accumulated yeah. depreciation at the end is the opening accumulated depreciation at the beginning plus yes, which, depreciation oh, yeah. during the year. Are we which is so, yes. yes, so it is going to be zero plus 9,000. We never had plus. anything at the beginning of the year. Ne? So it will be zero plus, plus. 9,000. So you're going to get 9,000 there. Oh, okay. Right. Then we will come and calculate the depreciation uh, during the year. So the depreciation in the year 2016 now, we can easily say it is still 100,000 minus the residual value of 10,000. We divide it by 10, you still get your, is it 9,000? Yes, you get your 9,000. That's what you're going to put there is 9,000. This year, there is no depreciation. Tell me what the thing is. Right. Then, there is another way that you can calculate your, your depreciation that I want you to, to fully understand. You can calculate your this one was the depreciation calculated on the what? On the cost. So if it is on the cost, it means that you are going to use the cost of the asset and also the total useful life of the what? Of the asset. But if you are going to calculate your depreciation based on the carrying amount at the beginning of, of year. So if you're calculating your depreciation based on the carrying amount at the beginning of the year, you are going to say carrying amount at beginning of year minus the residual value divided by the remaining useful life at beginning of year. Is that clear? It would be your carrying amount at the beginning of the year minus the residual value divided by the human remaining useful life at the beginning mm -hmm. of the year. Are we together? So let's do that for the year 2016. So the carrying amount at the beginning of the year 2016 is 91,000. So I'm going to come and I put my 91,000 there. Are we together? I subtract my residual value. It is still 
10,000. I divide it by the remaining useful life at the beginning yeah. of the year. So the total useful life of the asset is 10 years. We have Ten only years. used one year. So, so it's it nine. 10 minus one, which is nine. So it will be a 91 minus 81. 91 minus 10, you are going to get 81,000 divided by nine. How much do you get? 9,000. You are going to get 9,000. So there are two ways to calculate a depreciation. You can use the cost. And if you are using the cost, you just know that you are going to be using the total useful life of the asset. But if you are using the carrying amount of the asset, you will be using the remaining useful life at the beginning. So it should everything should be the same. If we use the carrying amount at the beginning, we have to divide by the carrying by the remaining useful life also at the beginning. Do we understand that part? No. So Clear. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. The residual, residual value. After yes, till when are you going to subtract it? Are you going to subtract it throughout the useful life? Yes, the residual oh, value. Okay. Remember, what, the reason why we are taking out the residual value is because we are trying to calculate the depreciable amount. You understand? Because the residual value is not depreciated. So because the, the residual value is not depreciated, so whatever amount that you are calculating should be excluding the residual value. So if they say the residual value is 10,000, you just know that whatever amount that I'm supposed to, 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 to depreciate, 10,000 should not be included. So at the beginning of the year, the asset had a value of 91,000. But of that 91,000, 10,000 should not be depreciated. That's the reason why I am separating it. I don't know if I've answered your question. No, you did. Okay. Thank you. So, right. So that's how you calculate your, your depreciation. So in this case, I have got a depreciation of 9,000. So at the end of the year, the cost of the asset is still 10,000, 100,000. Now my accumulated depreciation, Mr. Damien there, I said it is the uh, amount at the beginning. You yeah. add the amount during. So in this case, our accumulated depreciation at the end of the year is going to be 9,000 plus 9,000, which gives us 18,000. So I'm going to put my 18,000 there. So mm. 100,000 minus 18,000 is going to give me, is it 82? Yes. Am I right? Yes, it's 82,000. Yes. Questions, mm -hmm. additions, or subtractions? Now, we have skipped 15, 16. Now we want us to go to 2020 straight away. How are we going to calculate the year 2020? In the next coming five minutes, can you try to do 2020 on your own? There. Twenty. Right, you should be done. If you haven't, if you're not done, then life is tough. Uh, let's start. Uh, what did we get? Good people. Are uh, people still there? I put the carrying amount at the end of the year for sixty-seven six hundred. And end. my depreciation. Yes. Remember, and we my... start with the beginning. We start with the beginning, ne? Hmm. What did you get at the beginning? At the beginning, I took the 
balances at the end for 2016 and mm -hmm. then put it on 2020. But I wasn't sure about because um, okay. I'm confused about the other years. All right. If so I need to. Yes. Anybody else? Uh, I I actually took the whole cost price, which is hundred thousand, and deducted the residual amount and divided by the num the useful life, and then I multiplied it with the number of years that up until twenty twenty, which is six years. All right. And that gave right. me fifty four thousand. All right. Let's see if our current answers are correct. So we have now different answers. The cost doesn't change. It's still hundred. So let's just put 100, it's a free mark. In the examination, that's what you start with, 100, 100. You put your 100 out together. Then the accumulated depreciation, now this is at the beginning of the year. Remember what we said, what we put at the beginning is the end of the previous year. Do we understand? And our previous year was the year 2019. The previous year for 2020 is 2019. Do we agree? Good people? Yes. yes. So it is 2019. So what we do now is we can draw our timeline. Let's draw our timeline. Our asset was bought on 1 January 2015. Are we together? We are in the year 2020. So the asset was there until 31 December. So we have 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019. So the asset has been there for one, two, three, four years. So we have to calculate the accumulated depreciation until the end of the year, 31 December, 2019. Why? Because we know that the opening balance for the year 2020 is the closing balance for the year 2019. Are we together? So I am going to come and I say my accumulated depreciation at the beginning of the year is going to be the cost, which was 100,000. I subtract my residual value. I divide by 10 years, multiplied by the depreciation for four years. Are uh, we together? So I'm going to calculate the depreciation for four years. So in this case, it is going to be a 100,000 minus 10,000 divided by 10 multiplied by four, 36,000. Is that clear? We understand. Yes. All right. So you are going to put thirty six thousand there. So your carrying amount minus minus hundred thousand is going to be four thousand. Then the depreciation for the year will obviously be the same. There was no change in anything. So we are going to say the depreciation for the current year is equal to 100,000 minus the residual value of 10,000 divided by 10. It is still 9,000 rand. So I'm going to put my 9,000 there. Alternatively, we can use that method whereby we calculate our depreciation based on the carrying amount. So our carrying amount at the beginning of the year is 64,000. We subtract the, the residual value of 10,000. We divide by the remaining useful life also at the beginning of the year. So which is 10 minus how many years have gone so far? 10 years that have gone are four. So minus four, so we are going to say a 54,000 divided by six, 
happiness. Right, so our accumulated depreciation at the end of the year is going to be 36,000 plus 9,000, what do we get? 5,000. Five. So it will be 100. minus 100, not 55. Um, I try to do it um, for each year the way you were doing yeah. it manually, but, but I'm out with you one. Got the same answer. I got the same you answer, but I've got it for for 2019. So I don't know where. Maybe I must. I must something. Yes. Yeah, but now you you understand how to take the what the shortcut. If you are looking at the opening balance, you have to first yeah. calculate what the closing balance of the previous year which you are going to bring into the current financial year is the open balance, I would get. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. yes. so that's what you basically do. Let's do for the year 2023 and see if it's going to win. Yeah. For which year? 2023. The notes for the year 2023. Now I've shown you how to do the shortcut. Please do the shortcut. 2023. Remember, the year ended 31 December 2023. All right, you should be done. If you're not, then you're shy. Uh, just kidding. <laughs> right. Right, now we are in the year 2023. So 2023, the cost doesn't change. It is still 100,000. Accumulated depreciation, we have to calculate the accumulated depreciation for the prior year because that will be the opening for the year 2023. So the prior year is the year 2022. Are we together? The asset has been there for the year 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022. How many years are that? Are those? It's seven years. How many years do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, it's seven years. We have got seven years, ne? It is seven years. Right. So if it is seven years, we are going to calculate our accumulated depreciation at the beginning of the year, which is the end of the previous year. So it will be 100,000. We take out 10,000. We divide by 10 multiplied by seven. It's full years. I would care. We'll come and we do the months at a later stage. So it would be 100,000 minus 10,000. It's 63,000. Getting 63,000. Now, somebody has got a certain noise there. Okay, 63,000. So I'm come and I put my 63,000 there. So minus 100,000, I get 37,000. 
depreciation in the current year will just be simply 100,000 minus 10,000 divided by 10. You will get 10,000 every year. Depreciation, no addition, there's a depreciation of nine. Alternatively, you can calculate your depreciation based on the what? Carrying amount. So we can say our depreciation is going to be the carrying amount at the beginning of the year of 37,000 minus the residual value. We divide by the remaining useful life also at the beginning of the year, which is 10 minus seven, which is going to be 27,000 divided by three. It's 9,000. 9,000. Are we together? So our cost is still 100. Accumulated depreciation is going to be 63,000 plus 9,000. It will give us 72,000. So 100 minus 72, you get 28,000. No questions. I should presume. All right. So, all right. Are we together? Any questions, additions, or subtractions on what we have? discussed so far. I'll catch up on the recording. Right. Now, let's come to something else. The next principle that we want to cover, if the residual value and remaining useful life changes, what are we going to do? If the residual value and the remaining useful life changes. It can change during the year, are we together? So when calculating our depreciation, we are not going to charge our depreciation based on the what, on the cost, because things have what, have changed. So our depreciation is going to be charged based on the carrying amount at the beginning of the year, minus the new residual value, if they change to the residual value, divided by the remaining useful life at the beginning. Write that one down. Is that clear? Right. Are we still there? Okay. Did you write the formula down? Yes, sir. Still writing. Oh. Still writing. Still right. Okay. Done. 
Okay. All right, so when calculating our, when the, we said when the residual value and the useful life changes, we are going to calculate our depreciation in the current year based on the what? On the carrying amount and the remaining useful life of, of the asset. We agree. Now, let's say, on 31 December 2022, the residual value was determined to be Nine thousand. Disclose for the year twenty twenty two. Now, in the year twenty two, twenty twenty two, good people, we are going to come and we say we draw our template again. Twenty twenty two. Our cost doesn't change. It is still one hundred thousand. Then we have to calculate the accumulated depreciation at the beginning of the year. How do we calculate the accumulated depreciation at the beginning of the year? We have got 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019. 2020, 2021, how many years is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, is it seven years? 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So the asset has been there for, for seven years. Remember the residual value changed when, on 31 December, 2022. Are we together? So at the beginning of the year, in the year 2021, uh, there was no change. So we are still using the same principle, uh, 100,000 minus 10,000 divided by 10, multiplied by seven. How much do we get? 9,000 by seven, I'm getting 63,000. So I'll come, I put my 63 there, 100,000 minus 63,000. How much do we get? 37. Is that clear? Am I right? Yes. Right. Then the depreciation in the current year, we said it will be the carrying amount at the beginning of year minus the new residual value divided by the remaining useful life at the beginning of the year. So in this case, our carrying amount at the beginning of the year is 37,000. We subtract the new residual value they said the residual value is going to be 9,000 rand. Are we together? So I'm going to subtract 9,000 divided by the remaining useful life at the beginning of the year, which is 10 years minus seven. How much do we get? 
Divided by three. I'm getting nine three three three. Now you will notice that our depreciation is increased. Why is it increased? Because we have also increased the depreciable amount. We we were subtracting 10. Now we are only subtracting 9,000. So the amount that is depreciable is now, uh, before it was supposed to be 37 minus 10, where you get 27, but now it is going to be uh, 30, is 28,000 divided by three. You get 9,333. So depreciation will be 9,333. Then cost is still 100. Accumulated depreciation will be 63,000 plus Questions, addition, cause questions. It's clear. Take okay, that. Happiness. Right. Let's look at the change in the useful life. Let's look at the change in the useful life. So whenever there is going to be a change in the remaining useful life, what are we going to, to do? The same thing that we did, we say, we said when charging our, our depreciation, we will say carrying amount at the beginning of the year minus the residual value divided by the remaining useful life at the beginning of the year. Let's say that on 31 December 2017, the same example, the remaining useful life was determined to be 10 years, and let's not use 10. It was determined to be 5 years.
Right. So let's look at the year. We said year what? 2017. Yeah, 2017. The cost is still the same 100,000. Accumulated depreciation. The asset was bought in the year 2015, 2016. So the asset has been there for it has been there for how many years? It's two years. For two years. So when we are calculating our accumulated depreciation at the beginning of the year, we are going to say it is 100,000 minus 10,000 divided by 10 years multiplied by two years. I need to say two years, 15 and 16. So, yes. How much is it? Is it 18? 18,000. So we come and we put our 18,000 there. So 18,000 minus 100,000. 82,000. Then we have to calculate the depreciation in the current year. Now, how are we going to calculate the depreciation in the current year? So what you do, good people, is to check. We have got the year 2015, January. This is the one December, 2016, 2017. Now, they are saying that on the 31st of December, 2017, the remaining useful life of the asset is five years. Do we agree? That's what they're saying. On the 31st of December, 2017, the remaining useful life was determined to be, to be five years. So the question is, when we are charging our depreciation in the current year, when we are charging our, our depreciation in the current year, we said our depreciation, since we have changed the remaining useful life, it will be a carrying amount at the beginning of the year minus your residual value divided by the remaining useful life of the asset at the beginning of the year. I would get so the carrying amount at the beginning of the year is 82,000. We take out 10,000, we subtract, we divide by the remaining useful life at the beginning of the year. What is the remaining useful life at the beginning of the year? If the remaining useful life of the asset is now five years. Good people. What it's is five. the remaining? Five years is on the 31st of what? Of December, end of the year. Till now we want at the beginning. I need to be know that every time when you are charging your remaining useful life, I need beginning so, of the year. Six years. Sorry. Six. It is going to be what? Six years. Because if we say six minus one, you are going to get what? Five. So in this case, we are going to say five plus one to get your remaining useful life at the beginning because the five is the amount or it is the remaining useful life at 
the end. So to go at the beginning, you are going to say, how did I find the five? It was balanced at the beginning, minus one, I get five. So to go back to the balance at the beginning, I will say five plus one, then you get what, six. So in this case, it will be, uh, is it what, 72,000 divided by six. Yes, 72,000 divided by six. I'm going to get a depreciation of, of 12. Am I right? 82,000 minus 10,000 divided by six. So you put your 12,000 there. Cost still 100. Cumulative depreciation will be 18 plus 12. So minus 100, get 70,000. Questions, additions, or subtractions? We are all happy. If any question comes with the change in your life and everything, you'll be able to kick it. All right, so this was the basics that we are supposed to, to be looking at. The next thing that we are going to look at is going to be the the issue of deferred payment whenever the entity is going to be having a deferred payment together. So whenever there's going to be a deferred payment, we need to see how the deferred payment is going to be, to be accounted for in the next class that we need. I'm going to just post a few questions on the group so that you can just practice on those, on the things that we have uh, actually uh, uh, looked at. A deferred payment is not in your syllabus. Let's leave it out. Right. We can look at number one abnormal credit terms. We have to look at that. Uh, in the coming week, we also have to look at uh, the inspection cost whenever there is going to be an inspection. Whenever there's going to be an inspection, we can look at the swaps, we can look at the, the disposal of assets altogether. Then as we move, we'll be looking at, at other, other things there. So first thing to look at, you can look at that if, if you are alone at home, abnormal credit terms, inspection, any swaps and any disposal of an asset, how we are going to be disclosing it in the annual financial statements. Questions, additions, subtractions. All right. So let's meet again on, on Monday at 19.15, quarter past 7 p.m. Eh? Right. The silence means people are confused. Oh, they don't know what to say. Overwhelmed. Oh, what is the problem? Good people. Butata King. There's no butata. All right. If there's no butata, let's meet on Monday. I need to be agreed that no one is coming on Saturday. Yeah. All right. Sure. Tell me, uh, when are you sending the recording? I'm sending the recording after I finished uploading it. Yes. I will send the recording after finishing recording, uploading it. I usually.
liquidity to a new 